good morning everybody and welcome back to the walk today is thursday july 20th and we are continuing in this study of places where jesus showed up in the old testament now um, with many of these there's a little bit of debate about whether or not it was jesus but i think it's important to see um, both sides of the argument and kind of um, dig into the bible and see what the bible says so today we're starting in Joshua 5, starting in verse 13, and it says, When Joshua was by Jericho, he lift up, lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man was standing before him with, his, with a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Now I have come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take off your sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. So let's think this through. We've got the commander of the Lord's army standing there with a sword in his hand. Joshua is recognizing that this is a holy person and he is worshiping him and falls with his face to the ground. Now, we don't worship angels. So there's a lot of um, debate about whether or not this might have been Jesus Christ. And I as I started to look into the debate, I started looking at the other passages that people use to corroborate that it was Jesus. And one of those is Ephesians 6, starting in verse 17. This is that whole armor of God passage. And the, there's a part of it that says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. We've got this man standing here in Joshua with a sword drawn in his hand, and he's the commander of the Lord's army. To me, that kind of points towards that. That points towards Jesus. Jesus is the Word that became flesh. And then in Hebrews four twelve, it says, "For the Word of God, who's the Word? Jesus is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrows, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart." Then we look at John one, and it says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We just looked at that on Monday when we saw that Jesus was there at creation. And then if we skip down to John 1.14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the Son of God from the Father, full of grace and truth. So as we think back to Joshua, We've got this, this commander of the Lord's army standing there with a drawn sword. Who's going to be commanding that army? It's got to be Jesus. Um, and I, after reading the debate and the people that argue that it's not Jesus and the people that argue that it is Jesus, I'm falling on the side that this is Jesus. Because we've got all these other scriptures to back this up. That sword is in his hand. He's ready to take on that battle. And so how does this apply to us in our lives? The bottom line is you've got the commander of the Lord's army inside of you when you entered into that, into that relationship with Jesus Christ. You are on the winning side of every battle because you've got Jesus on your side. You can look a demon in the face and say, get out of here in Jesus' name, and it has no choice but to flee. Keep in mind, those demons are going to quote scripture, and they do know who God is. They will recognize who God is. They'll tell you who God is. But they want to pull you away from God. They want to get you out of that relationship and keep you from walking side by side with him. So as you go into your prayer closet, keep in mind that when you are reading that Bible, you are sharpening your sword. That word becomes flesh, uh, became flesh when Jesus came down to earth. Now Jesus is inside of you and you can call on his name Anytime you are in a spiritual battle and you've got the winning side. So as you go into your prayer closet, look over these passages and think about where do you fall? Look at some of the debate on both sides. Um, do you believe that this is Jesus? Do you not believe that this is Jesus? But either way, we have to recognize that when we, were, we are in that spiritual battle, it doesn't have to be one on our power. 
It's all won, won by the power and the authority of Jesus' name. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.